all of you have a, a, an invisible light switch on your forehead. You might not know this yet. But as a leader, I found out I was always teaching people how their mind works. So imagine you have a light switch. It's not a dimmer switch. It's not er, clever or fancy. It's binary, down, up. Okay? That switch has to do with what part of your mind you're in, low self or high self, okay, with who you are. We all got this switch. When it's toggled down, you're in low self, and you're seeing the world through ego, and ego lies. Ego is that part of us that continually does horrible math. It continually sees us as the victim and all of you as the villains. So the ego has this distorted view of the world. It just walks around seeing insult where there isn't any. It's just always scanning the environment to see how I'm awesome, you're not. Or I'm victim and it's your fault. The ego tells us it's our circumstances that are the reasons we can't succeed. When we're suffering, the ego says it's everybody else that caused it. To feel better when we're in low self, we vent and gossip and tattle and score keep and compare when we're toggled down. When we're toggled down, we can't see any place that we can plug and play or engage. Our natural instinct is to make a difference, is to have impact. But when we're toggled down, we can't see a single place we can make a difference. I can't change admissions. I can't change epic. I can't stop upgrades. I can't control this. I can't control that. So what do we do when we're in in low self? We disengage and feel very justified about why we had to. Engagement, what you guys are pretty good at, engagement we find is more correlated to where your toggle switch is than what your environment's doing, than what your circumstances are. Now, when you're toggled up, you're in high self. You see so many portals where you could plug and play that you never saw before. I can't change, you know, epic, but I certainly can be back in the patient room calming the patient. Like, you see all these places you can plug and play, so you naturally engage. Engagement is your natural choice to answer your own craving of being great and having impact, right? When you're in high self, instead of accessing just the most primitive form of knowledge you have, in low self, it's your amygdala, it's that, that, that fight or flight stuff. When you're in high self, you access... <clears throat> all of your intelligence. Your brain is in more coherence. You're using bigger parts of your brain. If we were scanning you, it would light up like a Christmas tree when you're in high self, right? And it even brings in that part of your brain that's like the God part, the bliss part, the like we can do anything together part. Like low self, limited, high self, expansive. Now when you're in low self, there just aren't any solutions. Have you ever worked with somebody in low self? Usually they're called adolescents. You could talk to your teacher. That won't work. They're the devil reincarnated. <laughs> you could do extra work. Oh, I'll never get credit for it. Has anybody tried to talk to somebody in low self and offer them suggestions? Nothing's getting in. High self, right, a lot gets in. People are collaborative. They're naturally innovative. They're accountable. They're happy. Low self, high self. How do you get from low self to high self? Well, you pr- play on a... a a limitation of the brain. The cool thing about this whole light switch is that it's binary. You can't be in low self and high self at the same time. You can't be venting and self-reflecting simultaneously. It is impossible. You can't be judging and helping at the same time. Y'all been helped by a judger? Y'all been helped by a martyr? It's not helpful, right? So you can't truly be helping and judging at the same time. So how do you flip your toggle switch? We have found the simple act of self-reflection is the ultimate drama diffuser. I can't vent and self-reflect at the same time. So I use your brain limitation against you. I won't work with people in low self. They just need calmed down, loved up, and their toggle switch toggled up. Now, all that leadership stuff we've taught you in the past, that works with people in high self. But it doesn't work with people in low self. And you got to, as a leader, be managing the energy of your people. Now, some people have broken toggle switches. I'm a therapist. I've met them. Okay? Don't employ them right now. you got choices, people. Like, if your toggle switch works, okay, we'll work with you because it's the human condition. I write books on this stuff, but my toggle switch, I toggle down all day long. It isn't that you're to- you won't toggle down. It's that you feel the misery that comes with it, and you very quickly go, nope, not doing this. I'm going to self-reflect and toggle up. 
And the way you self-reflect is either a question for self-reflection, what would great look like, what could I do to help, what's my part in this mess, or a tool for self-reflection, which will teach us a lot of those today as well. So it gets interesting because right now we are working against the, the, the human or the, the natural order of things. Right now, you're trying to implement some techniques that won't work given the condition of somebody's toggle switch. If, in, how many of you have been around two-year-olds lately? Okay? You guys know this stuff. If a two-year-old has this clicker and you want the clicker from the two-year-old, what is the worst strategy to use to get the clicker away from a two-year-old? Yeah, just take it, right? Because this two-year-old might even not, they might not even like the clicker until you do. Right? You're like, two-year-old, nice clicker, mine. <laughs> like, well, you can't have it, give it to me. Now game on. You can drag a two-year-old across the stage, not that you'd want to, with just a clicker. What's a better strategy if you're going to be successful with two-year-olds to get a clicker away? Yeah, trade them something, right? Do you know why this works? It's because it's the limitation of a two-year-old brain. Two-year-olds can't manage two things at once. Little babies, you put two things in their hands, they aren't managing them. They don't even know they have them, right? They're like, whoa. <laughs> but a two-year-old has just discovered they aren't you, that they're separate, their ego just developed. That's why all of a sudden they go, oh my gosh, we're not one person. I can dart? I'm doing it. <laughs> like, that's why they run up, like weird directions all the time. They're like, oh my God, we're separate. I'm out of here. Like, <laughs> a two-year-old can't manage two things at once. That's why when they go up the stairs, they do that one foot thing. They can't do the fancy bicycling yet, right? They just gotta go one foot, one foot, one foot. My training, and we can ask the, the um, doc over here, but my training is we even tested for child development. Like I would give you a pen, and I'd let you attach to it, and then I would see if you resisted me trying to get the pen from you. And then the best way to get something away from a two-year-old is like, hey, nice clicker. Mine certainly is. Have you seen my water bottle? The two-year-old's like, whoa. And then I go, do you want it? I just put them in a horrible dilemma. They're like, I do want it, but I can only do one thing at the time, so I'd have to drop my clicker, okay. And to get the water bottle, they drop the clicker. It's effortless. No one's crying, no one gets hurt. The trio doesn't even know what happened to them. You wait a couple minutes, you go, or the clicker, they go, dang it. She's like, the price is right. I don't know. In leadership, we work way too hard, you guys, because we're always engaging the ego. 